I'm very intrigued by how you were able to get from a life that was very streamlined and very normal and acceptable by, by society as the dream life. Like you were in real estate, you had investments, you got married and you were highly unhappy. I actually got a pay rise to 100k a year, a 20% increase in my pay rise and then I quit because they wouldn't give me some holiday to get married. <laughs> Like, I think they, I would have some time, but I wanted to go for a little while, for three months, and then they wouldn't agree to that. Did you have savings at the time? Yeah. How much savings did you 20 have? 20 grand. Oh my gosh, I had 20 grand when I left as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's what seems to be a good cushion. Uh -huh. Well, 20 grand years ago. I don't know if now it would go as far. Well, I was spent it on a holiday. I came back broke. <laughs> Why did you quit the societal norm life? I always had dreams of I guess like living a more interesting life but I felt like that life was really if I look back on that time in my life I just feel like it was a flat line you know how you get the heartbeat monitors in hospitals I feel like that was a flat line something deep inside was telling me that there's more to life and for a long time I didn't listen and I was happy to stay in a comfort zone and I think after trauma from the childhood that we had, I kind of needed it. I needed a stable life and just stability, but then I got uncomfortable, too comfortable in the comfort zone and the comfort zone started getting really, really uncomfortable because I was craving more. I was, you know, we've been raised to think differently about life. And I think that is our greatest privilege that we've ever been given in life for everything else we've worked hard for that idea that life can be different just kept niggling but I wasn't brave enough to do anything until my ex broke up with me I, I was already starting to do like little things like trying to set goals with him and trying to think about you know what kind of life can we build together he didn't like the fact that I was entrepreneurial and that I spent a lot of time on my business which was you know generating a good amount of money he complained to his friends and one of his friends came and kind of confronted me about it and I told him how much money I was earning and I was just like he was like oh and he was like, oh, that's pretty good. So I was already doing different things, but my ex didn't like that. He wanted someone that would just mold to the type of life that he wanted. I loved him so much, I wouldn't have left, even though I was dying inside. And the fact that he broke it off and said those words that I don't think this is working for me while we were lying in bed at night. And then I would just burst out crying and said the same thing. This isn't what, I don't feel like this is working either. That was kind of like the ticket to freedom. And not long afterwards, he actually said to me, now you're free out of the Dougie cage. Yeah. So that was one of the greatest gifts that he ever gave me. He was always really good at giving presents actually <laughs> but that was the greatest one what happened after you had your ticket to freedom a lot of turmoil and heartbreak and realizing that I have to actually rely on myself now because I was so codependent and always relying on him for everything and I just got so uh, what's the word I just expected him to just be there and to do things and yeah I was a very different person then <laughs> yeah you guys were 30 13 years together and then did it morph into codependency in the relationship oh yeah definitely like there was a lot of traumas playing out and all sorts of things a lot of it was healing as well because he was such a rock in my life when I needed that rock so he was such a incredible part of my life and I'm forever grateful for him and I'll always always love him but we were just also two very different people and our lives kept going in different directions and we just kept cling, trying to cling on, trying to make it work because that's what you're supposed to do in society. You're just meant to make things work and just keep going and all that kind of stuff. Even when things really start to not feel right, there's two types of this because sometimes you need to leave and the best thing you can do is leave and sometimes you need to stay in this case it was it was time for us to leave but we just kept trying to cling on and eventually it was just too hard to do so it was both of us were suffering so much after that there was a lot of turmoil a lot of excess <laughs> and we both had investment properties we thought that for a little while we would just keep the investment properties together but eventually we just thought no we got 
able to split it. So we sold the investment property. So I had, I think, 50K out of that. And he did too. For me, I was just like, all right, well. And then I also had another job that I got and I was doing really well, but the boss hated me and I got fired in a really weird way. It was just crazy situation. I was so angry about that. And so things were just not working out in my life in Sydney. So I was just like, well, I can try to get another job or I could do something completely different. (laughs) And he had the same option. He was thinking, oh, I could go traveling or I could buy an apartment. And he chose the apartment. I bought a van and got out of Sydney (laughs) and started traveling and getting to know myself and just focusing on myself for the first time in my life. One time that you've highlighted to me that I didn't know that you were experiencing was when you shaved your head. I had so many mental breakdowns and that was one of them. It was mostly on weekends that I would have mental breakdowns because throughout the week I could keep busy and avoid my feelings and everything that was happening inside. And then weekends I had time to myself and that's when depression, when the thoughts, when all the pain would come flooding in. So I didn't actually like weekends very much. I just preferred, you know, I felt much happier during the week and I didn't understand emotions like I do now and internal pain like I do now. You know, that was my body trying to send me signals and messages and I didn't know I wasn't equipped to deal with it. So to me, it was just depression or mental breakdowns, but It was my body trying to get me onto the right track, trying to process things, trying to, my intuition telling me what it was that I needed to do in life, but I didn't know how to listen or I wasn't listening to those niggles and wanted to repress them and shut shut them down as much as possible. But yeah, I had a lot of mental breakdowns and suicidal thoughts and all sorts of things at that stage. What does a mental breakdown look like? It felt like all of a sudden I'd just bang and then it was just like, I was just wiped out. I don't know, it's really hard. I had the same thing in Bali. I just kept having these. It was just so much pain all built up to the point where there was nowhere else to go and I didn't, there was no escape route. That's where, when I started thinking about suicide because like, how can I live with all this pain? How long of a period was that for you? years like on and off I had suicidal ideation and yeah I'd think about it quite a bit now that you know so much like so differently like suicidal thoughts a lot of people have them you see that as what it's just a part of me trying to give me relief for the pain that I'm feeling so I'm grateful when those suicidal parts come in because I know that there's something that I need to change in my life I love the way that you see emotions as a complete compass now how much was your van that you purchased I think it was for sale for like over seven grand but I negotiated it down to I think six but then essentially you had a house for six thousand dollars australian yes that you lived in for nine months and did you have bills at the time only from my online business which were tiny so you granted yourself an essentially nine months permission to slow down time yes was there a part of you that was like i'm used to comforts the first couple of weeks that i was in my van i was like i'm homeless what am I doing with my life that I have nothing? You know, I've gone from property investments, a husband, the life that I'm supposed to be living to now living on the streets in my van. And then after those two weeks, I started seeing the world in a very different way. <laughs> and it was the best thing ever because I could park along multi-million dollar mansions and have the same view as them and have the same access to the beaches as them. <laughs> and I was like, mm, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> And then I started meeting other van lifers and we just had such a good, we had a van fam. I still love van life so much and my heart still longs for it sometimes. So I have to go for a few trips, I think in the near future, but it was challenging, but the challenges made me so much stronger, like so much stronger because I had to have solutions for everything. And that was a time of me going, Hey, actually I have myself. I got my back. Like I can get through this, whatever challenges come my way, I can figure it out. And that's what helped me grow my confidence. And I had the comfiest setup in my van. It was so cozy and it was such a healing space because that's when I started studying Tantra and learning about embodiment and connecting with my body, connecting with myself. I learned about self-love and started loving myself. I started doing so much inner work as well. The van is just such a sacred space. Is this when you started feeling happy again? 
I actually have a YouTube video where I recorded the time that I actually started to feel happy for the first time in a long time. It was in the van mm -hmm. because I didn't remember what happiness felt like. Like I had a book that Osho wrote on joy and I read that throughout my relationship and I started to get a bit of an inclination and but then life still kind of like my life was just not aligned to joy and happiness at the time but it was it gave me like just this little planted a seed and then I started kind of trying to seek out more joy but it was in the van and connecting to myself and doing inner work and just loving myself and doing things that were in alignment with who I was like living in the van and choosing where I wanted to go when I wanted to go and just resting and slowing down and I thought I knew what happiness was but I didn't until I actually started pursuing a life that was fully aligned with who I was and doing inner work that brings out a whole different spark and one of the things that I kept noticing in, in the corporate world, especially in the massive corporate that I worked for, I would look around the people and one of the things that I noticed about them was their eyes were so dull. There was no sparkle in the eyes of aliveness. And I was just like, I don't want to end up like these people. When I started living this life doing Tantra, I started noticing my eyes, the whites of my eyes started becoming brighter. My eyes were clearer and there was a sparkle, like there was just this glisten and just like this happiness in my eyes. And then I noticed the people that have the same. I think after my ayahuasca trauma, so I spent a few years healing from ayahuasca trauma, as you know, it was the craziest journey ever and through trauma you can withdraw and I feel I didn't even realize it so much I think I was starting to get some inclinations but I was too scared to start to participate back in the world and being broke meant that I had to go out and find other solutions and actually participate in the world again so I posted you know thanks to my partner he made the suggestion of posting in the local community see seeing if anyone had work for me on farms or gardens or anything like that and that was scary because I was putting myself back out into the world and then I got all these jobs and I actually started to seeing people more face to face and communicating with people and seeing my community and all of these things and then also the moving my body so much more the physical labor my body has been through so much in the past few months because I've been working harder physically than I have in such a long time you know I was stuck behind a computer for years and doing embodiment practices but it's not the same as actually getting out and participating in the world and physical work it's such a great way to just process emotions and to to live so there's been so much of that didn't you also mention that your self-worth around finances kind of dissolved well we had that in the family it's always been the thing in our family is like you know, whoever has the most money is the winner. <laughs> there was a lot of shame of not having money. So when I put out the video, my YouTube video on healing money shame, that was me healing my money shame and going, look at me, I'm broke. And you know what? I'm okay. The universe kind of pushed me into that direction and I, I really appreciate it because I needed that. I always like to learn the lessons that I'm, you know, from the situations that I'm put in and I feel like I learned that lesson there. And now I'm slowly building up the financial confidence. You know, I've got a job, I have a few clients, starting to work on my online business again but from a different perspective mm -hmm. and having more confidence yeah. and working through any blocks that I have as well. You know, you went from marketing manager to then living in a van to then starting to learn Tantra. You could have easily gone back, well, I have a skill set in this. So I'm going to go back to doing what I did because that's what paid the money. Or I could just start from scratch. And I feel like I'm starting from scratch every single day. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with starting from scratch. You know, I'm learning new skills every day. But when I thought about going back into corporate, everything about me was like, I can't go back I can't do it I just it's not the right path I know I'll just die internally but then living in the van slowing down processing healing it just opens up a whole different world of world of opportunity 
once you have a broken life and have broken your life, it just gets easier to take those leaps into the unknown and try new things, especially after such a long time of needing to know where you're going and all of that kind of stuff. A broken life is the best playground to start new things and healing as well doing like really getting to know myself when the opportunity of tantra came up i went to my first workshop and i just felt for the first time my heart open and then i met my friends at a pub and I was just an attractant for men because I was so in my feminine after being in my masculine for so long and I was just like floating that night I was like what is this sorcery once you are connected to yourself you're a lot more connected to the universe and the universe is kind of like a guide as well and using your emotions your intuition signs from the universe you can be guided along your right path that is fully aligned with who you are and that is when things start to unfold and you might be able to manifest things that you didn't even know like this farm i had a dream of being on a farm all my life i didn't know how the was going to do it I'm probably the worst person with finances in my in our family I didn't know how it was going to happen but it just so happens that after I've done all this work and pursued things that are in alignment for me this opportunity came and I jumped at it me and my partner and that we want to do farming differently that is aligned with our values that looks after and respects animals that respects food sources and creates good quality food sources that does the right thing by the land by the animals by people by the community and there's so many farmers out there already doing this but not enough still mm -hmm. and i just think this is one of the most important things that we could ever do to tend to the land and being on the land has brought me closer to nature it's toughened me up you know the city life weakened me and i've worked on farms before but living on a farm toughens you up because you're faced with so many things like death with the cycles of nature it strengthened me mentally physically and spiritually and you still love it me and nat are at the baby stages we have learned so many skills and have so much knowledge and wisdom from this but where we are at the baby stages there is so much to learn like this is my travels you travel this is my travels i'm like how can i learn more about the soil where can i plant this like how what plant goes with this one what animals what do i need to do to tend to them to make them healthy all these things and you're doing it all organically the problem with the soil that we have in the world is dreadful mm -hmm. like the soil is basically destroyed and i used to think as a youngin that you can just eat vegetables and you got your nutrients but now the amount of nutrients that are in, in uh, vegetables is peanuts compared yeah. to what it used to be because of how fast these plants are grown and also how much fertilizer and all bullshit is in the soil chemicals glyphosate and just even monoculture planting one plant for miles on end that's not nature that's us trying to control nature yeah so now seeing how bad the food situation is for the majority of the world it's a really sad situation so you are doing such a big job for humanity learning these skills and i'm grateful because i am not interested myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah well in a few years you might <laughs> maybe i don't know i like good food like the idea of growing my own food really does appeal to me yeah but i don't know how with this crazy travel lifestyle and not knowing how on earth i'll ever get rid of this feeling of not being able to settle yeah like it really is overwhelming so yeah. we'll see but in the meantime Thanks for doing it on the behalf of the family. <laughs> what other things do you do? It's really hard to, for me to kind of put into a few words what I do. Because I feel like I connect women mostly to themselves and then kind of start them off on a journey of self-discovery and self-growth and spiritual growth. Because I feel like in our society, we've all been stunted spiritually. And it's we're kind of going around looping in circles and not knowing which way is out and I kind of just provide a way out and then the mm. soul just starts to learn the lessons that it came here to learn. I feel like that's what I do. And you do it with a whole bunch of amazing practices you've learned and the own experiences that you've gone through, which has helped you to live it. And now you know a way out to have true fulfillment in your life. Yeah, well, as horrible as the ayahuasca 
trauma was and it was a trauma to all of the psychedelic fanatics out there <laughs> same with my dmt experience yeah <laughs> no, you just took it wrong no it just, up. yeah you just need to do it again you haven't let the mother plant heal you enough <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> 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 that's from a human perspective like trauma is important to acknowledge it's real it lives in the body it's real it lives in the body and without acknowledgement of the trauma you can't move on to the next stages of healing so it's important to acknowledge that from a human perspective from a spiritual perspective i got lots out of it and a shitloads of wisdom because i chose to mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that it was easy yeah. It doesn't mean that there weren't stages that I th- didn't think I needed to kill myself to enter a new reality because I was in the wrong reality. It was tough. And there are a lot of people that do ayahuasca that do commit suicide afterwards. I chose somehow to get through it. Thank goodness I had the skills that I did before I did ayahuasca of tantra, of voice dialogue, of you know all the therapies that we've done. I had tools in my tool belt that I could use when I went through trauma. I had an understanding of trauma. If I didn't have an understanding of what was actually happening to my body, to my nervous system, I would have topped myself. Yeah, DMT really fucked me as well. Yeah, so uh, it's weird that we also relate on this this experience because it it still has permanently damaged me. And that's what I was gonna say. Like I listening to this conversation and how many times you're like, and lesson from this is, and the lesson from this is, and I know it's our mindset, like the way we've been brought up, obviously, but not everybody sees life that way. So we are able to get out of that position be like okay this happened because of this and this is like thank goodness now I'm grateful for it but we do so much work to get to that point whereas some people will just get stuck and with DMT what it's done to me is now every single day I think about death all the time I look at my clock I'm like wow that was 10 minutes 10 minutes of my lifeblood 10 minutes hit closer closer to my death to my family's death to people around me dying like it's every minute now I count it and it's I'm not sure if it's getting worse this is a new thing that's actually come up at the end of each day I'm like damn another day's gone. And at the same time, holy shit, I got to live another day. I'm still dealing with DMT after four or five years. Oh yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> yeah. Well, it would be interesting to do some digging into that part yeah. possibly and see what message it has for you. Yeah. And that's the thing. You have so many more tools. I have, I'm still learning. I'm so fresh to this whole journey. Is that what inner work looks like? It doesn't look like anything. <laughs> To the outside. That's the hard thing. Yeah, exactly. Because you can't go, oh, okay, this is what it's meant to look like so I can copy it. Because everyone's journey of inner work is a bit different, is a bit unique. And everyone has different lessons in life. Every soul has come here to learn different things. And every soul has had a different journey in life. So there's different things to work through. But starting with inner work is, you know, sitting with your emotions and learning what they mean especially the painful ones, Mm. you know, start with the happy ones and go, what happens when I'm happy and how do I feel when I'm happy? And what does this mean? And get to know the happy ones, but then figure out what the painful ones mean. And once you have an understanding and you understand that they send you messages and then that, that they're there for a reason, then you actually can love them Mm -hmm. and bring them back to love and stop pushing parts of yourself away Mm. and that's the journey of unconditional love of loving all parts of yourself yeah that's a good one because i also think not many people know what it feels like the the amount of people and it's alarming and i've been there and i'm still coming out of it that don't know what they want or they don't know what they desire and i'm reading a book nonviolent communication freaking awesome but it also talks about like express your desires like tell people what you want but most of us have been conditioned to not say what we want or need because you push your own needs aside for like to make sure that your mom's happy or your dad's happy or your or society's happy like learning about actually what you want is a difficult journey for a lot of people and one of the things i'm doing now is to be like what sparks joy so when you say what sparks joy it's like what feels good what do you want more of in your life that's what you want like even with sex like what feels good in sex what doesn't feel good in sex what do you want like what sparks joy and makes you feel like oh i want more of that yeah and do that Yeah. yeah a lot of people don't do that at all it's all about feeling so much like we have this incredible guidance system everything that we're looking for is within us yeah 
yeah. starting with feelings intuition is a feeling as well it's like listen to your feelings one gift that you gave me <laughs> i don't know if it was you most likely but of course you were talking about intuition and how important it is to listen to it yada yada i started doing this thing <laughs> so what i do is that if i'm a little torn i'll just go like do i want to leave for la tomorrow <laughs> my voice is no okay am i going to be leaving for la tomorrow it leans <laughs> It actually just leaned forward. I don't really want to leave, but I am leaving. Yeah. And I know that. I know I've got, I've got to be a big girl and sort some shit out in Iceland. Yeah. So I've got to go. But like this little tiny sway that I just do now. I and it's just wild. Cool. It's accurate. And sometimes I don't like the answer, but I'm pursuing it because I feel it's such an obvious. And it's mixed with feelings. It's not just my body sway, but it's also like one of them feels as if there's, there's like clarity up here. And the other one just feels like, mm. so that's what I figured out for me works when it comes to learning about intuition and I am listening to it. So if it says do that, I'm like, okay. Even though I'm like, really? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, okay, do it. And yeah. the more you listen to it, the stronger yeah. it gets. The realm of the body and the realm of the feminine energy is very subtle a lot of the time and because the world has that we live in we keep going for bigger stronger more special effects in movies louder 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 living in cities where it's just noise constantly all that kind of stuff mm. we have become desensitized to the body's language which is the subtle realm and so when you first try to change or try to balance yourself out it seems like super subtle like oh, hello is anything happening but then the more you practice it the louder and louder it gets and you can't ignore your intuition you can't ignore your feelings mm. and if you do you're gonna get punished <laughs> and like you're just not it's just like you know that you're gonna take the wrong track it's not gonna be aligned with who you actually are and you're gonna suffer in some way, shape, or form. Every time. Yeah. Right now I'm suffering because of a decision I made and I, push, I kept doing it and doing it, even though everything inside of me was like, no. Yeah. But I was like, this benefit's good, this benefit's good, this benefit, I should just be grateful, push it aside. And now I'm paying the price. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. For someone that is stuck on a trajectory of life that is very socially acceptable, their family, not that our family, was like this because I found I remember mum saying she's like if you got a normal nine to, to five I'd be disappointed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but for like sometimes there's family pressures of like no I need you to be a doctor or this a lawyer I need you to live here I need you to support this I need you to do these things society says it you say it to yourself like if I am to be successful like I need to be successful so I need these things you've gone there then you just destroyed your life and you rebuilt it do you have advice? I think that without opposites, we wouldn't know what freedom is. So sometimes it's really good to be imprisoned in a life that you don't enjoy so that you can know just how freaking good freedom is. So once you get sick enough of your life and you set the intention, you know, when I was in Sydney still and after the breakup, I still didn't feel like I felt free, but I still felt like something wrong. And I said, and I just kept repeating to myself, freedom, 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 freedom. No matter where I went, what I did internally, it was freedom. My intention was freedom, freedom, freedom. Little did I know that that was going to lead to a spiritual awakening and a whole heap of healing. And I was like, <laughs> this is, this is freedom. <laughs> <laughs> it comes down to realizing that you are worthy of a better life as well. You know, everyone comes into this world with a unique path to live and experiences to experience. And you are inher inherently, inherently worthy of living that true path that is true to you. So setting an intention, just setting an intention and just having that intention can completely transform your life. Just start there. If that is what you want, watch out what you ask for. Be ready for a wild ride because you might end up breaking up with your partner. You might quit your job. You might do all these types of things. But what might seem painful at that stage is also you re reclaiming your soul and reclaiming your own power.
And that can be one of the most painful journeys that you go on, but also the most rewarding. In terms of living your truth, there's two things. So a human can live in two states of being. One is when we're conditioned and programmed by society and we have traumas that we're led by because we've created survival mechanisms, which equals to behaviors and actions. We can live from that place. When we choose to heal and, and within that place, we tend to have the desires of society to have the big house, to have the big car, to, you know, all the get married and all that kind of like tick all the boxes that society puts out in front of you. It can be easy to just know what you're supposed to do, but our souls often crave something different. If you choose to go on a journey of inner work, of healing, of really pulling away what is you, what it has been programmed into you, what, who are you really? That is where you find that truth of your soul. And that once you start aligning your life to that truth of your soul, the universe helps you and just miracles freaking happen. You won't know how your dreams become reality, but they do. And the universe isn't like, oh, this is for you. You still need to take action. And she's going to throw you challenging situations like me going broke and having to get my ass out back into the world and having to figure out my finances, which is probably one of my biggest spiritual lessons in this life. You'll go through those challenges and it'll be exactly what you needed exactly what your soul needed in order to get to that next stage of growth, of um, fulfillment, of happiness. And you'll be like, holy shit. You'll be so much more confident in yourself. You'll be just like inspiring to others. Your energy changes. People want to be around you. They feel safe around you. They like being around you. You like being around yourself. Because you're living your truth, that truth that has always been in your soul. There's my sermon. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Inspiring, Stephanie. (laughs) What does freedom mean to you? I think that's pursuing the soul path that you came here to live. Like, it's interesting because I feel like in this reality, in this world, and I've seen a few different spiritual teachings on this, is that, you know, a lot of people say that we have free will and to a certain extent we do, but we also don't because we have a very specific soul path that each soul has come here to live. And if we don't pursue that soul path, life gets really hard. The universe makes it really hard for us because the universe is just trying to correct us and get us back onto our own path. So I feel like following that true path is freedom. Do you think you're a free human? Yeah, (laughs) definitely. (laughs) I mean, within the constraints of society and this, this nature's laws and you know, the universal laws, I think freedom needs boundaries as well. But within the boundaries, I'm definitely a free human. All right. Well, I want to say thank you to mum and dad for producing Stephanie. <laughs> and Sorel and Conrad. <laughs> for producing all of us that we could have this conversation. Thank you for partaking and sharing your wisdom, which is endless amounts and i'm excited to link people with all the information that you have on all the amazing ways to that people can work with with you and learn from you so thank you for being here i love you i appreciate you i love you and i appreciate you thank you so much for putting your faith in me in this interview (laughs) you're amazing people need to know about you thank you shrubby (laughs) i love you i love you (laughs) (laughs) okay that's enough love (laughs) never enough love Humble beginnings. My cameras have recently been stolen and I only have my phone to record on, but I just wanted to let you know that utopia.is is a way to support the free human videos running at the moment. They cost about $5,000 for me to produce each episode. And so your contribution, small monthly contribution will help these videos going. So if you are able to go to utopia.is to find out how you are able to keep this venture alive.